are watching ABC 7 News at 6 on your side. Welcome back to our special coverage of the aftermath of last night's huge storms. And here's the latest for you now at 630. Last night's line of severe storms left a huge mess behind. No one area was really spared of the destruction. More than 1 million people in our area remain without power now. Trees and power lines are down everywhere and a number of homes have been damaged or destroyed. And we know of at least nine people killed in our region. Before we get back to the pictures, we want to get another check of your forecast because so many people are still without power and it is still so hot outside. Yeah, and there's not much of a break in sight from the heat meteorologist Steve Rudin joins us with a look at the evening forecast. Steve and we have been very busy here uh, here in the Belfort Furniture Weather Center dealing with the pop up of some stronger storms. National Weather Service has now extended the severe thunderstorm warning for parts of the area, mainly south of the DC Metro. Take a look. This is until 730 this evening, so about another hour to go. Severe thunderstorm warning. The cells moving toward the east at 35 miles per hour. Central Culpeper County, Stafford County, Rockingham, Augusta counties all involved with the severe thunderstorm warning for another hour. Massive ponics. You'll see the storm arrive in your area in about 45 minutes or so in orange in just about 20 minutes or so, and you'll see how it's slowly moving off toward the east and the strong Stronger cells will be capable of producing wind gusts in excess of 50 miles per hour, along with some very heavy downpours, even some small hail. The good news, this system moving due east. It will affect uh, Fredericksburg over the next hour or so, but notice where DC is toward the top of your screen. No thunderstorms on the way for the immediate metro area, and that is very good news for the repairs that are taking place to restore power across the region. Full look at the forecast and the extended outlook coming up in just a few minutes. Kendis. All right, Steve, thank you. Now let's check in with our reporters and the massive cleanup effort that is underway, ev underway everywhere. And unfortunately, we also have a number of deaths in our area to talk about, including Maryland. Suzanne Kennedy is live there now in Kensington with more. Suzanne. Well, the 71 year old woman from Silver Spring was killed when a large tree hit her roof last night. She was found very early this morning in a second floor bedroom. We want to show you some other pictures from around the area today. In Northwest Washington, the damage was widespread where large mature trees fell on numerous cars and homes. People woke up this morning to find debris in their yards, roof damage and some roads impassable. Many were surprised by the fierce nature of the early summer storm. When I opened the door, it was literally stuff was just flying. I mean, left to right, up and down in circles, stuff was just flying everywhere. It was uh, like a burst. You know, big gust of wind, um, very concentrated, um, kind of came through and then passed rather quickly. But At the height of the storm, 200,000 people plus here in Montgomery County were without power. Three cooling centers were opened early today because so many people remain without power. The cleanup will be extensive here and it will take days before things are back to normal. Reporting live tonight in Kensington, Maryland, Suzanne Kennedy, ABC 7 News. All right, Suzanne and our team coverage of the deadly storms continues now in Virginia. That's where we've confirmed reports of two people killed in the Springfield area. Really sad story here. ABC 7's Richard Reeve talked with the wife of one of the victims killed during last night's storm. Well, behind me, you can see the tree and the twisted power lines. Witnesses say this all unfolded around 1030 on Friday night uh, that Kit Nguyen of Burke, Virginia, was driving his car in this area when it was struck by a tree. Now we have some video of the area. Uh, he was apparently pronounced dead at the scene. Nguyen's family says he had called minutes before saying he was on the way here from classes at an ITT school, that he was on the way home. Not hearing anything for an hour or more, his family went back over his usual driving route and found the car surrounded by police and the area taped off. The detective came over and told me that my husband passed away because the, the tree fell on top of the car. Well, actually, I thought I heard a tree crash, and then I heard the horns blow, and then I saw the uh, traffic back up on Old King Mill. Sorry to hear about it, that's clear. And, and unfortunately, dealing with Mother Nature, you never know. Now, family members tell us they were unable to formally identify Nguyen until early this morning. This, sadly, was not the only storm-related death. 
in this area in West Springfield. A 90 year old woman was killed when a tree crashed through her roof and killed her in her bed. This has turned out to be not only a destructive storm, but a deadly one as well. In Springfield, Richard Reeve, ABC 7 News. Absolutely, Rich. Thank you for that. Now to the district and our continuing coverage there. There is also a lot of damage across several neighborhoods in D.C. And unfortunately, yet another death there to talk about. It all happened in northwest Washington tonight, and that's where we find ABC 7's Mike Kinneen. Mike, what can you tell us? We say it often during big storms like this that it is best to stay inside because you never know when there might be down power lines. And the scene behind me is such a tragic example of that. Uh, a tree came crashing down across 31st Street Northwest into power lines, into this front yard, and on top of that Maserati parked in the driveway. Police and neighbors tell us that the car then ignited in flames. And when the male homeowner, 67-year-old Muhammad Gafourian, rushed outside, he was electrocuted. Police believe he might have been trying to put out that car fire, but with those down power lines and his driveway soaked with rain, he was electrocuted. That's when police say his wife rushed out to help him. She was also shocked and taken to the hospital in critical condition. She's expected to survive her injuries. On the same block here on 31st Street Northwest, another huge tree tumbled onto a neighbor's home, and residents here in this neighborhood are fuming mad because they say for years they've been complaining about these trees, requesting their removal. In fact, across the district today, trees fell, and in Eastern Market, an oak tree demolished a Toyota Tundra pickup, smashing it in half. All of a sudden, I hear this incredible crash and breaking glass, and I walk into the living room, and there's this piece of tree sticking through the window. Fortunately, no one was injured in that truck or nearby homes there on, H on 8th Street Southeast. Residents hope there's no structural damage to their homes. All day, tree, uh, tree trimming crews have cleared debris from roads, cars, and homes, and they're saying that despite this scorching hot weather, they're expecting to work all weekend long. The crews here uh, in Northwest just wrapped up their work here cleaning up these two homes, but they no doubt have many other uh, homes to get to this weekend. Back to you. All right, Mike Kinnean in Northwest Washington Force. Mike, thank you. And we want to get you some updated numbers now on the power outages across the region. Yeah, here's what we know. Pepco reports 411,000 customers without lights. More than a half of the outages are in Montgomery County. Dominion, Virginia also has 370,000 outages in Northern Virginia. Novick with 14,000 and BGE has 405,000 people without power tonight. Getting out of town and away from the heat proved to be difficult as well. The area's airports felt the same power pinch that many of us are doing. Now, Sunland Miller continues our team coverage now with more damage and the travel headaches at the airport. This is quite the cleanup the morning before your vacation. It just looks like a war zone. It's just terrible. It was like the movies, like the Armageddon movies. In Falls Church, Virginia, residents dug out after down power lines, crushed cars, and demolished park gazebos, which left those trying to leave town early for the holiday with a bittersweet send-off. We're actually headed to Toronto today. Um, so we're <laughs> it's fortuitous, I guess, that we'll be out of the country for a few days. At Dulles Airport, the send-off got even bumpier. Hectic, hectic has been very difficult for me. Here at Dulles Airport, the good news is they never lost power, but the bad news is a lot of the internet sites are down for the airlines, meaning they have to check in all these people the old-fashioned way. The computers are down, so we're in our 16th hour of waiting. The manual check-in process delayed many flights, but airport officials say no flights were canceled specifically due to the storm. My sister insisted that we come early, and I'm glad we did. By the end of the day today, most airlines had come back online, making it much easier for travelers when checking in. But airline officials say if you are traveling tonight or tomorrow, to leave yourself a lot of extra time. Dulles Airport, Sunland Miller, ABC 7 News. And if you know someone who's without electricity right now, but they still have a cell phone with a charge, well, then they can still get the information that they need to know right now to deal with the aftermath of these storms. That's because our ABC 7 News app has the most important information about the storm recovery. On the app right now, the latest power outage numbers. There are also phone numbers for the power companies. And we have a list of cooling centers if they need to get out of the heat for the evening. Still to come here on this special edition of ABC 7 News at 6 o'clock. Plenty of you were out and about taking pictures after the storm. We're going to share some of what you saw.
Plus, plans ruined by Mother Nature on the National Mall. See what the storms did to cancel part of this weekend's Folk Life Festival. And the show must go on, even if there's no one there in person to watch it. We're going to have the highlights from the storm ravaged AT&T National at Congressional coming up. In continuing our coverage now of the deadly storms that ripped through the region, there's going to be a very unhappy pilot somewhere tonight. News Chopper 7 was up over Tipton Airport in Anne Arundel County today. Well, this is just proof that you never know what Mother Nature is going to do. In this case, the storm chose to flip over just one plane sitting out there on the tarmac. All of the other planes appear to be untouched. Well, if you had plans this weekend, they were probably ruined because of last night's nasty weather. Yeah, that's especially if you were planning on going to the Smithsonian's Folklife Festival on the National Mall. Mother Nature did quite a number there. Our Ross Plater is live on the mall with more on the damage left behind. Here, Ross. This is one of the most popular summer festivals here in D.C., easily attracting thousands. So you can understand that the organizers tried to batten down the hatches, but they were still no match for last night's fierce storm. Crews were up bright and early Saturday morning trying to repair some of the damaged tents after a powerful overnight storm wreaked havoc at the Smithsonian Folklife Festival on the National Mall. When the storms rolled through our site, uh, we had prepared for them, but the winds were so swift that they compromised about a quarter to a third of our tents. Uh, they bent the, the metal poles and uh, pulled the canopies down. The festival is the largest annual cultural event in D.C., drawing thousands of visitors, both tourists and locals, who were disappointed it is closed for now. But they certainly understand why after having witnessed the storm themselves. We're used to hurricanes and everything else down south, but it was a good storm for up here, especially in cities and stuff, and to see the damage that it caused up here, all the limbs everywhere, brush everywhere, so it, it had to be kicking pretty good. Looks like something just blew right through here and kind of tore everything up, but we're hoping it might be on again tomorrow. Now you can see the tents are back up and ready to go. The hope here is that they can reopen the festival about 11 o'clock tomorrow morning. That is weather permitting. We should tell you they were able to salvage part of the day. They moved that concert tonight inside to the Natural History Museum. We're live at the National Mall. I'm Ross Plater, ABC 7 News. Let's hope that it's salvaged for all those people mm -hmm. who traveled from Azerbaijan. Uh, yeah, and well, came a long way. Yeah, for that festival. So good. We've been showing you plenty of pictures and video from our news gathering today, but plenty of you were also so snapping pictures and quite some pictures we got. We'd like to share some of them with you. Chris Van Cleve has been searching through the eyewitness section of our website and he's live in our newsroom with that and the latest on the power outages. Chris, you guys got a lot to show you, so we're going to jump right to it. We're going to start with some video from Herndon. This from our viewer Tim there. He took this video inside his garage as the storm raged. If we can take that full screen, you'll get a real sense for just how intense the wind was. Watch as it's bending the trees and blowing the rain. Okay, now we're going to switch over to Sterling about 1015 last night. You can hear how ferocious the storm was there. Shifting now to Mount Vernon Hospital in Alexandria, Virginia. That was a transformer blowing. Now the story behind this picture in Calvert County, the family that emailed this to us said about five minutes into the storm, they got uh, they woke up their parents who were sleeping in this bed, got everybody down to the basement. A few minutes later, that branch tore through the house, came lay, came to lay right on the bed where their parents had been sleeping just a few minutes before no one was hurt there. We've got tons of pictures literally of cars that have been crushed today and an awful lot of photos like this one from Silver Spring where trees came down on homes here in Annapolis. This tree slicing through a house in Annapolis and in Stafford. Similar story. Fairfax, same case. You got a big tree coming down on a house here in Oxon Hill. The facade, the facade, the front of this shoppers food warehouse came down because of those strong winds. And we saw an awful lot of power lines that have come down here. This power pole snapped one of six poles that broke in Laurel. It's now resting on a car there. A big cleanup effort across the region. The Holy Redeemer Church lost its steeple. We will end with a look real quick at some of the power outages. You can see still more than 400,000 people in the Pepco area alone without power. Region-wide, it's closer to a million.
subscribers in the dark tonight. We are live in the newsroom. Chris Van Cleve, ABC 7 News. All right, Chris, thank you. And unfortunately, Chris doesn't have enough time to show you all the amazing pictures that were sent in, but you can see a lot more of the photos that we collected on our website, WJLA.com. And besides the important information, we have a photo gallery of some of the biggest destruction that we found across our area. Well, that line of thunderstorms that plowed into the D.C. area was several hundred miles long and moved quickly across hundreds of miles. Yeah, the damage stretches far from here. So today, President Obama called governors of some of the worst hit states and directed FEMA to help with the massive cleanup. ABC's, ABC's Stephen Portnoy has more. The sirens had went off, and so then we backed up to the kitchen, and about that time, boom. The fierce winds raced across 12 states and topped 90 miles per hour in some places. It got very black and very windy, and my vehicle was rocking. A very vicious storm uh, came through the area, and uh, high wind snapped a pine tree, which fell on a tent that was occupied by two young boys, age two and seven. Uh, they were both killed in the incident. It was pretty bad. Everything was blowing around here. Um, anything that's not nailed down to the ground was up and moving. Hurricane force winds knocked down power lines, trapping drivers in their cars. There were these gigantic towering uh, power lines and poles leaning over Hamilton Road. And you could see it from like a mile's distance. And it just looked like something out of a Stephen King movie. Millions of residents from Indiana to New Jersey and down the eastern seaboard are without power. They have no air conditioning, with temperatures soaring into the hundreds. 85% of the state of West Virginia is out of power right now. States of emergency were declared in Washington, D.C., Ohio, and Virginia. Stephen Portnoy, ABC News, Washington. Mm. And yeah. as far as any more storms that we might be seeing tonight, it looks like they're going to stay down in the Culpeper area. Yeah, it, it, further south you go, the better chance for seeing the storms. Fredericksburg, your best chance for seeing storms within the next half hour to 45 minutes. But I want to show you this. This is a track of uh, this whole system oh, wow. as it started off in Indiana, mm. moved across Ohio, and then just over a matter of, what, less than 12 hours, it zipped into our area and picked up quite a bit of intensity. An amazing picture, and we had wind gusts ahead of this at around 70 miles per hour. Looking outside right now, Annapolis, Maryland, what a beautiful evening to enjoy the warm summer-like weather, or summery weather, I should say, and our temperatures are going to remain toasty for the next few hours or so. 96 degrees, that's the high at Reagan National earlier today. The reason why we don't have a low is that their monitoring systems went down because of the storm, but they did have wind gusts of about 70 miles per hour. 95 right now at the airport. The heat index, not much of a problem, but still hot. If you're looking for some relief from the heat and humidity, head over to Accident, Maryland. Right now, 81 degrees at a high of 82. Still hot downtown D.C., 92 degrees. It feels like 100. And Bowie, Maryland, looking at 93 with hardly any wind whatsoever. Temperature, 90. Winchester, 90. Culpepper, Quantico, looking at 94 degrees. Heat index, making it feel a bit hotter. 101 in Quantico. And the heat advisory has now been canceled for the metro area. And no advisories, no warnings for the day tomorrow. Atlanta, now 104. They're down two degrees from their all time record high. It feels like 105 there. It feels like 110 in Wilmington. Here's that cluster of storms that moved through yesterday, long gone. Watching another line developing across central Indiana, but it really doesn't have that oomph that we had yesterday. Heading just a bit closer. The atmosphere becoming a bit more unstable. Area shaded in purple. This is a severe thunderstorm warning now extended until 730 this evening. Uh, Fredericksburg, this is moving due east at around 35 miles per hour. And right now we're at about 6 50, give it around 715, 730. It will be overhead in your area, capable of producing gusty winds and some very heavy downpours. Here's our future cast. The next 48 hours will take us through the day tomorrow. Once again, another chance for some storms during the afternoon hours. Look at the highs, though 96, 97, 98, 100 degrees. Not out of the question. It's going to feel a lot more uncomfortable tomorrow due to increased dew point levels, a lot more humidity in the atmosphere. So it's going to feel not so great out there. Here's our forecast for tonight. 72 to 80 degrees. Expect the storms to diminish fairly early on. Otherwise, partly cloudy skies for tomorrow. 95 to 100 heat index around 105 with winds out of the west at 10 to 15. 
The extended outlook calls for temperatures to cool just a tiny, tiny bit. Keep in mind Wednesday that will be 4th of July holiday may see a few thunderstorms, but I'm confident the fireworks will go off with no delays. WJLA.com, your online home for ABC 7 weather. Check out our interactive radar and you can check it out 24 hours a day and you control it so you can zoom in on your own neighborhood to see where the storms are located. The Toyota Sports Desk, brought to you by your local Toyota dealers, moving you forward. And we've been talking all day long about how golf fans weren't able to take part in the yeah. tournament going on right now at Congressional because of some 40 down trees that were yes. on the green. So if there's a golf tournament and nobody's there, to see it. does <laughs> it, it matter? Does, it, does, does anybody Tiger actually? Yeah. Yeah. I, I but you weren't able to get out there today yeah, either. Yeah, we lost power. Other sets were completely destroyed. Yeah. So I'm thankful for our photographer yeah. Kendall Griggs for breaking down last night. Well, even with Tiger Woods roaring to life today, the course at Congressional Country Club was silent. No spectators or volunteers were allowed on the premises today and the tournament will honor those passes for tomorrow's fourth round. Don't you worry, but here is why it was an eerie sight. Wow. Nobody out on the congressional grounds until the golfers, of course, roughly 40 trees, as Autria mentioned, fell to the ground. One wreaking havoc on the 14th fairway. They couldn't move it for hours. The damage suspended the tournament for six hours. Kudos to many members of the staff who stayed overnight to work on the mess and deservedly so they earned Woods respect in a statement. Okay. I mean, I hate to say it, but we could see, be seeing round two as we get, especially late afternoon into the evening again today. And we're kind of in the same pattern. We got a lot of heat and humidity, so there's a lot of energy in the atmosphere. And I think when storms develop, they'll bow like they did yesterday, and that's what produces those strong winds. And this is what I mentioned Woods in a statement early this afternoon said it has been an extraordinary 24 hours at the 2012 AT&T National. I am so impressed by the hard work and dedication from everyone involved with this tournament. I'm very thankful for their efforts and look forward to welcoming the fans back on Sunday. But it is officially called Tiger's tournament, of course. So let's go to him. Third hole. Tiger from 34 feet away. Birdie attempts. And he sinks it right in to go four under par. On the sixth hole, Tiger with the chip. And just rolls right into the cup for Birdie. Moves to five under. Still on a roll. Tenth hole, Tiger. Another Birdie attempt. And the ball just circles around the cup to go in. That moves him to six under. Tiger is still at six under through 14 holes. He's two strokes behind the leader. Well, the last time Steven Strasburg took the mound in Atlanta, he proved that even a seemingly perfect superstar can show imperfection. Strasburg struggled with his fastball then, and today wasn't much better. Top of the second, though, here we go. One nothing Nats. Strasburg helps himself with a base hit up the middle. It's been great this season. Adam LaRoche would come home. It's 2 nothing Nationals. But Strasburg got tired quick. Must be feeling the same heat here down there. In fact, they are. He lasted three innings, gave up three runs, two hits, four Four walks, only had four strikeouts, and still wasn't happy about coming out. Though temps on the field were about 120 degrees, the Nats are trailing seven to five in the sixth. And also going on right now, Wimbledon, Serena in her match, but in the NBA, there you go. Serena at work. She lost the first set in a tie break, but came back strong in the second set, taking it six to two. Serena would break her opponent's serve to take an eight to seven lead in the third set and the match point. She just puts the volley away. Clearly pumped up. That's the emotion you want to see. She wins six, seven, six, two, nine, seven. And again, in NBA news, the eve before Sunday's free agency, the Celtics re-signed Kevin Garnett to three years, 43 million. He's up there though. He's, he's getting kind of up a there. gamble. Yeah, yeah, and the team's a little older too, mm -hmm. but okay, we'll see. Yes. Thanks. Steve has a final look at the forecast after the break.